So when I was just getting started with my kind of exploration of non-classical genres, one of the first skills that I really wanted to learn on the cello was how to chop. Chopping just seems like the de facto cool non-classical thing to do. So this is just a quick intro to chopping and there will be more videos later going into much more depth and more nuance about how we can really expand this technical vocabulary. But to get you started in three quick steps, We've been training our whole lives to go back and forth, left and right with the bow. With chopping, we need to develop a new physical vocabulary of up and down. I think of chops as coming from the same sort of sound as a scrape. And these are kind of like an analog to uh, up bow and down bow. We have kind of the down and the up scrape. And this sort of motion, this extension of the arm is a very, is the fundamental movement of chopping. So to start, step one, I would start just getting used to a scrape. I like to do it on the bottom two strings because it's the loudest, darkest tone, at least on the cello that we can get. And so starting from there and just getting a nice, beautiful, <laughs> a nice gritty scrape. Down and up, down and up. Now you'll notice that we want this motion to be completely perpendicular to the strings. If we get any side to side motion at all, right, we start actually activating the string as a pitch, which when we're chopping, we usually don't want. So we want to practice going straight down and straight up so that all we're getting is the scrape sound. Now, once you've done that, that's step one. Once you've really gotten used to that, step two, is to do the scrape, but coming from the air. Because to fast forward a little bit, all that the chop is, is the scrape just made much more finite and kind of uh, distilled into a point. But so to get there, we're gonna start from above and kind of land into a scrape, a down scrape. Almost like a, a plane that's coming in for landing and maybe uh, hit the runway a little too fast. But we want that same vertical motion going straight down. And for the time being, really let your bow slide. Really listen for the tone of the scrape. From above. Great. Now, once we've done that, that's step two, then all we need to do is condense that scrape into a point. I like to think of this as the chop coming down at kind of a 45 degree angle. Kind of if this is our string, our bow is gonna hit at 45 degrees. I find that that gives the kind of uh, the sweet spot between the amount of skid that I get because the skid, the scrape is what's actually gonna get us the chop sound. It, it gives us a balance of that while also um, not going too far. So I think of 45 degrees so if you think of that same motion, but instead of letting your bow skate across, now come straight down at 45 degrees and let the string stop your bow. There's the chop. We come from above. And even at this beginning stage, I would encourage you, really use the weight of your arm. Let your arm, which is already has all this arm weight in it, just let your arm feel like it is relaxing and gravity is pulling it down. So that's the down chop. That's kind of the equivalent of our down bow, right? It's very strong and it kind of starts the motion. Well, of course, there's also gonna be the opposite of that. The same way that we have up bows, we're also gonna have up chops. And so the up chop simply means is when we're going to bring our hand back up. And for the up chops, I like to think of this as more of like 15 degrees. If we came down at 45 degrees, we actually kind of bring it back up a little bit flatter because I find, at least for my own chopping, if I come back up at 45 degrees, I don't catch the scrape on the way back. Remember when we were doing scrapes, right? That scrape on the way back, we really need to get the string. We need to pull back on the string in order to hear the sound. So I like to think of the up chops as about 15 degrees. So 45 degrees going down, and then we kind of flatten it and kind of scrape a little more on the way back. So that we get that crisp up chop. 
down, up. Keep using your arm weight. And that is our down and up chop. So much of chopping is not just about developing the kind of physical vocabulary to make the sound, but it's also about becoming better rhythmic players. We are keeping the rhythm, so we want to practice keeping really good time. So one example might just be this simple blues progression. Let's do just some simple chops together. Here we go. One, two, three, four. That's it. Just focus on the exact placement. Making sure that you're right in time, right in the pocket. Too late. This is how I would start your journey into chopping. It can be tempting to want to go for all the fast and crazy looking patterns. But if you don't have a really strong sense of rhythm and placement, then it's just going to feel a little unsettled. Focus on the tone and the placement. And then, once you've gotten that, maybe, we can add some up chops. Woo! Too early. Not super glamorous, but many things in life are not. But that is how I would start chopping. Step one, start from the scrapes. Step two, scrapes from the air. And then condense the point at which we hit the scrape, 45 degrees on the way down, 15 degrees kind of sliding back. And we have our chop. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. There's a lot more coming. Uh, to get more and more deeper and more complicated and advanced into the world of chopping. Uh, hope to see you in those videos. Super important, I almost forgot to say it, but two things that are going to be super important for your chopping success and tone are, make sure you've got some rosin, especially right here where you're going to be chopping. You're going to need to glue that thing up with some rosin to make sure you get some friction on your bow. And then, for all of our chopping, we want to be chopping right at the ferrule, as close as you can without starting to actually hit the frog. That's where we're gonna get the most efficient chop power. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, I would encourage you to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Let me know in the comments below what questions you have and what sorts of topics you would be interested in seeing me cover next. If you want to take lessons with me, make recordings with me, or just nerd out over some cool new tech, you can always send me an email listed on my channel page. And if you want to see some of these ideas in action, I would encourage you to check out my Duo archive. Until next time, keep on learning.